for joining us in Pure Love Talks. Thank you for your support. We want to let you know that we have a new YouTube channel and that's Heal to End, H-E-A-L, the number two, End, E-N-D, Heal to End. So join us there and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thank Hi, you. everybody. Welcome to Pure Love Talks, season two, episode 10. Hey, everyone. It is February and we didn't do a Pure Love Talks in January, but we are back. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, and this month, uh, we wanted to kind of spin off of what we did in December. We did a little uh, caretaker uh, resolution. We did a winter solstice and we talked about how we wanted to be like a better caretakers, better parents. And Mandy and I have been doing a lot of conversations about you know, how I wanted to be a better parent, how I wanted to listen to her more and um, just, you know, be accountable. And I started thinking about, I, I've always thought as my, of, of myself as a good parent. And people always tell me, oh, you're such a good parent. And, and I just started thinking about that in terms of, it's, it's the story that people have always told me. It's the story that I've told myself in comparison to, I guess the way um, I was raised, not that my mother was a bad parent, um, in comparison to the way I thought parents should be, right? Um, but <laughs> I guess I never directly asked my own child, like, have I been a good parent? And, you know, was I a good parent? Because if, uh, in thinking about my own parent, yes, I think my mother was a good parent in a lot of ways. Uh, there are definitely things I would have changed. Uh, I, if I could go back and change the hands of times, these are definitely things I would change. And so we just started talking. And I think um, I was asking her questions and we had one conversation in the kitchen and it, it has stayed with me so intensely this conversation and it connects very much so with, we had two conversations and it connects a lot to being a child of a survivor um, and secondary trauma. And so the conversation we had, I don't know if you want to set up the conversation in the kitchen if you remember how we, how I started with you. Um, from what I remember, I remember you were saying like, was there, you were just asking me basically, was there anything that I thought maybe you could have done differently or done better or something that, you know, stuck in my mind as a child or something, you know, like just anything that if there was any way that you made me feel a certain type of way, like to, to tell you about it. So the um, one of the things that I thought of was um, how manipulation played into a lot of things or your perceived view of manipulation. Mm -hmm. um, because I know a lot of times, like whenever I would cry, if I was in trouble or if you were just talking to me sternly mm -hmm. or something, I would just, I get emotional. And then you would say that, you know, I was trying to manipulate you with my tears and stuff. And I know like, I, at first, like, you know, as a kid, you're just like, mm, but now, you know, like getting older, I'm like, I'm realizing like that stuff like that did hurt me. And I think it, it played on how I didn't really express my feelings as often, or I try not to be as emotional because I didn't want people to think that I was doing that to sway them in a certain way, you know, like mm -hmm. when it really, I'm just a very emotional person and I'm an empath and I mean, have anxiety. So tense situations, they just come out as tears. Right. Even if I'm like, I'm listening or if I'm like, I agree, you are right. But just the situation is making me feel stuff. Yeah. Um, but 
I don't say it as like, oh, you, like, you scarred me and you did this to me. Like, not, and I'm not saying it in that way because I, at the same time, completely understand now as an adult, you know, getting to know you better as a person and not just as my mom and mm -hmm. learning about your past and everything. I understand why a lot of things you did, like why you did the things you did because you were, you know, you were still dealing with your own trauma and, you know, maneuvering and all that. And a lot of things were just a result of that. So like, I know it wasn't you intentionally trying to be mean or trying to shut me down or anything like that. It was just, you were acting through your trauma, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it makes me very, very sad. It, makes, it hurts my heart so deeply that I did that to you. Oh, it just makes me want to cry right now. <laughs> that I made you feel like that. That I didn't even realize that I was doing that to you. Um. Oh, that conversation just still hits me so hard that that my trauma, um, because my um, my sister, who was my abuser, was such a manipulator. Oh, such a manipulator, psychologically psychologically abused me, and manipulation was such a tool. And. Um, and I was manipulated a lot through, um, and domestic violence and what a lot of people don't know. I mean, people who are, um, advocates, um, and work with survivors know that, um, people who are survivors of CSA, there is a trajectory that can be, um, there's a high um, percentage of a trajectory. If you're a CSA survivor, there is a likelihood of you being a survivor of domestic violence, uh, likelihood of you being a survivor of adult rape, um, and so forth and so on. And I am a survivor of all of those things. Um, domestic violence, intimate partner, uh, violence, and rape. Um, and a lot of psychological abuse. And so I didn't even realize that with my own child, that when my child was crying and sad, and upset that those things were so triggering to me um, that I thought that my own child was manipulating me. Um, even when I would cry, like it's, it's, it's so funny that I had a conversation with um, a friend recently and I cried in that conversation. And I actually want to talk to my friend to say, I'm sorry I cried because I feel like I manipulated the situation because I cried. <laughs> And you ended up saying that to me too. And you were like, I'm not trying to take away from you, but I understand because I've been on that side. Like you're right. just feeling emotions. It's not, right. not you trying to twist it in your way. Cause I'm always just like, if you, you know, let your feelings out, but don't, it's not like you're doing it. Like, Oh, forgive me. <laughs> ah, like, you know, like you're really trying to make me feel like, damn, like they're so hurt. Maybe mm -hmm. I should, you know, like it's not in a way to sway me. It's just, I'm just like, I know you're feeling your feelings and, you But know. it's the, it's, it's still, it's the secondary trauma that I had no idea of. And still, that still affected you. No matter, I have my trauma, but my trauma still affected you. So it's, it's you know, I, when, when we talked about it and you said, but I, I, you know, it's okay and it's not okay. You know, like, I just don't want to say it isn't okay. I don't want to take that away from you. My, you know, like, I don't like the idea of my trauma trumping your trauma. My trauma is my trauma, but my trauma also um, affects you, you know, it affects you. And so that's, I, I want, that's important to me that it affected you, it affected how you shared yourself. The point is, we're working through it. I'm so sorry, baby. I am working through that. I'm still <laughs> working through that. Like sharing my emotions and, you know, wondering if something is manipulation or not. If, um, if 
people are actually very genuine. And I, I'm, I still wonder about those things. So, and that's completely understandable. Like, of course, mm -hmm. it would be weird if you were still completely trusting of people. Like, that's completely understandable. That's why I'm always like, it's okay because I understand, you know, like, I have no idea what it feels like to be in your head, to be in your body. So I can only sympathize so much, but I'm just like, and like, I can connect the dots and understand why. But I don't want you to say it's okay. I want you to push back and I want you to talk with me. If, if, if I, you know, if I have one of those, um, you know, triggers. I want you to, I hope, I should say, I hope that you feel comfortable enough to talk with me um, and that I am um, present enough to be able to, you know, respond or communicate with you, you know, because I don't want to hurt you, you know, and I want to be able to listen to you and I want you to be able to express yourself. You definitely give me that platform. You do. It's just hard for me to talk sometimes, but it's not that I'm not able to, you know, that I'm not allowed to. It's just hard for me to express my feelings, period. Being vulnerable is always like, you know, so. But it's a, we take it a step at a time, a day at a time. You know, we're much better and different than we were a year ago, two years ago. So as long as we're constantly progressing, moving upward and, you know, looking into ourselves, looking outward and trying to be better, then mm -hmm. we'll be okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about Joaquin too, you know, like how, how to do this completely differently with Joaquin, you know, and especially around gender, you know, like, you know, right now, you know, as far as we know, he is a boy, right? But even that, even knowing, you know, even right now that he's a boy, doesn't mean anything about how he expresses himself and um, with tears and emotions and all of that, um, you know, just doing it completely differently and and allowing for that expression. Um, yeah, when he, when he cries and stuff, like I let him cry, I give him a hug and comfort him and stuff. And, but I've already seen the positive effects of that because there was a day when I was crying and he came right up to me and like rubbed my head and gave me a hug and squeezed me so tight and it made me cry even more <laughs> because I was like, look at this sweet angel that I'm raising. Like, <laughs> and, I make, and then like, I remember like mentioning it to my friends and they're like, that's because he sees what you're doing and he's reciprocating that. Like you're letting him know that there is love and he can express himself and he's giving that back to you. And I was like, it makes me feel good that you know he recognizes oh mommy's sad maybe I should comfort her because when I'm sad mommy gives me a hug and rubs my back and mm -hmm. comforts me so I'm like I love that he's already learning that yeah. Yeah. Right. and then today we had a conversation mm -hmm. and how did we start that conversation about a miscommunication about me traveling right right and it was, right, because you were saying sometimes um, when we talk, it feels like, um, what were you saying that it feels like? Like, it, sometimes, like, if there's a miscommunication it, in your head, it, it may, like, the way you say it to me makes it seem like I have the worst intentions and I'm doing things on purpose because I want to, you know, because I don't care about what you're going through or how you feel or anything like that. Like, I'm just being completely inconsiderate when... It's really me being absent-minded mm. and, you know, not, it's not a deliberate thing. And, and then it was in connection to your health as well. Right. Feeling right. invisible. Right. Right. Because it's like, um, it's because of the, the feeling of being like let down. Right. Um, because it, I think it was multi-layered of, um, the, my wellness right now is like pretty invisible and, um, not feeling it's like not feeling believed, right? That's the CSA stuff and the the chronic migraines and um, I like everything that I'm feeling in my body is pretty invisible, so you can't really see it, and I'm really good at hiding it. <laughs> so, um, so it feels like um, nobody believes how how I feel in my body, and then it 
trigger is like nobody believes. Uh, actually, nobody does believe <laughs> in my family what I'm telling them about my um, what's happening with me. So, uh, so I think that triggers sometimes when I say things and nothing happens, and it's like, oh, nobody believes me. Nobody cares. And and I think I think because you're the closest person to me, you know. Um, and when you told me that, it made me feel again very sad. And I just, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry um, that I that I made you feel like that. And and I was like, God damn it! Why am I doing that? <laughs> why am I doing that to you? Um, and I and I misinterpret I misinterpret um, your forgetfulness. Um, I misinterpret sometimes your um, depression. When you're, you know, when you're sad and upset, um, and I'm sorry, and I and I tell you to communicate with me when I should be doing the same, and so I'm holding myself accountable here, um, and I apologize. Thank you, Mom. And I want to do better. I want to do better. I will do better as well, because I know I could communicate better, um, a lot of the time, because I'm in my head a lot, so. I know I need to be better with that as well, but like I was saying before, we're both like actively working to be better separately and together. So we're going to be okay. Yeah. And Joaquin is going to be okay and raised in a house full of love and gayness and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just made me realize like it, um, this year, I think after the, we did our winter solstice and the caregiver, you know, resolution, I'm telling you, after doing that in December, it's just a lot of things came to fruition, you know, mm -hmm. I asked to Very quickly. purge, 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 and purge all the negativity and bring in all the positivity, and it's been happening. I you mean, deserve it. It's been really happening. And so, and then all these conversations, like all these conversations, and I feel like um, with that, um, a lot of pain, but a lot of beauty has come in, and you know, hard conversations. A lot of hard conversations, and a lot of accountability. And that accountability, a lot of stuff is happening right here. Uh, with that too, is um, it's kind of interesting. I said this uh, out loud the other day. I'm like, I've been doing this work around CSA and healing for a very, very long time. I am 48 years old. This year I will be 49. And it's this year, I would have to say, is the actual true year. I think is the actual true year that I fully, I could say that I fully um, came out as a CSA survivor for sure, for real, told my told my true story, full story outside of my family, you know, for real. Um, yeah. That's a big thing. And I didn't realize that I hadn't done that. I, I literally didn't realize that I hadn't done that outside. I said, a, I told a version of my story. And now I told the, the bigger story. And I'm going to keep on telling my bigger story. I want and I will. That's how you're going to heal. Yeah. Sometimes as survivors, we tell the, the, the I was going to say the nice story. There's no nice story, but the, the cleaner version of our story to protect people. And I think I'm done protecting people. So I'll protect I, you. I think um, that's catapulted many, many changes for me. And it's good. <laughs> It's so good, and I think that released a lot of things, and now I'm seeing a lot of things for what they are, which is doing some healing with my baby right here, um, and seeing things about myself that I did not like, and so that's what I'm doing. And it's really good when you put a mirror to yourself and start changing things, because a lot of things fall into place. So, and that, the seeing the secondary effects on you, it really hurt my heart so much, and I wanna make, try to make it as right as possible. Yeah. Well, this is a the first step in doing it, the admitting, apologizing, you know, just acknowledging. Yeah. 
is would be I mean for most people that would even be enough just acknowledging that you know you might have caused some type of hurt you know other most people would just be like ah oh, get over it. you were a kid uh, it wasn't that deep it's not that serious but you know you're acknowledging that it did affect me so that's a, a huge major important step in that yeah. and this is not the only conversation we're gonna have because we'll be talking to we're blue in the face and you know things pop up later on you know so any i keep saying any time that you, even when you think it's so insignificant you know anything pops up you know we talk about it anytime any year i don't care if it's five years down the line those things do matter you know anything at all because you know it, it is a journey like little memories yes. pop up and things like that so continuous growing and learning yeah. yeah so i implore people parents out there to you know sometimes take the time to like sit back and think um sometimes we think of ourselves as a certain way and sometimes maybe we're right <laughs> but maybe we could be a little wrong so sometimes we can't hold ourselves accountable and sometimes it's hard to hold a mirror up to our own selves um, and we need that from other people the people around us people who love us such as people who don't like us uh, and our own children um, we need to get feedback so that we can become better versions of ourselves and sometimes we need to completely change ourselves and for survivors it's hard to journey through our pain and Sometimes we drive our families crazy <laughs> with our trauma and um, we have to really work through it. And secondary trauma is a real thing. Um, we don't intend to do anything and hurt our people, but it's, it's there. And sometimes things just kind of, you know, poke through. So we want to talk to our families and check in with them and see what's going on. Because it's hard all the way around, but you know. So check in, check in with our families. There's lots of books out there. We'll have some resources at the end. Um, yeah, you know, we gotta talk to our people, check in with our village and keep on doing this hard, hard work, but so, so worth it. So worth it. Yeah. So y'all take care and remember that the Pure Love Talks is now on the Heal to End YouTube channel. So don't forget Heal to End, H-E-A-L, the number two, end, Heal to End. And our new um, website is HealToEnd.org. So everything is on Heal to End, so check us out there. Um, thank you all for supporting us. Yes, thank you so much. And we will see you next month. All right, take care, y'all.